to the fifth video in the Kealoa Stand Up Paddle Biomechanics video. Um, this video we're going to really kind of talk about putting it all together, kind of putting all the all the pieces that we talked about in the foundation and the shoulder and the lower extremity videos together as one cohesive whole. And when we look at the whole paddling stroke and the biomechanics of the whole paddling stroke, we want to look at power, muscle power generation. And, and maybe an easy way to think about muscle power generation is to kind of think about a rubber band. If I want to smack you with a rubber band, do I want to pull it here? I want to pull it here. I want to pull it in that further, in that further range. And I want to do that because I have brothers, and I know you better get the best shot off right away. And it's the best shot because as we lengthen it, that rubber band has more stored energy. It has more potential to do work. It has more snap in it. And we want to think about muscles the same way. We want to be able to lengthen those muscles in order to set them up to do work. We want to load them so that they can explode and give us good power generation. So um, with that in mind, let's go ahead and hop you back up on the board, Dave, and we're going to and we're going to kind of we're going to kind of roll through the whole paddle stroke here. So what we want to do is we want to go back to that foundation video. We want to think about that sternal lift, that nice tall chest. We want to think about that athletic stance with the feet kind of hip to shoulder distance apart. We want to think about soft ankles and soft knees. And we really want to think about kind of finding a foundation through the base of that big toe and the heel. As we find that foundation through the base of the big toe and the heel, we kind of activate the muscles of the in insides of the thighs and then out to the outside buttocks area and we help stabilize the trunk. Uh, so this is our good, nice starting position. In this nice starting position, we have kind of the muscles of the trunk. They're all lengthened out. They're loaded. They're ready to explode. They're ready to do some work. And as we start to paddle, we want to kind of think about, we want to kind of think about maintaining that leg position, keeping those soft ankles and those soft knees, and letting our motion come from the hips. As those hips, as the forward motion of the trunk comes from the hips, we kind of generate, we soften up the work that the spine is having to do. Um, we want to kind of think about the spine as responsible for the rotation of the trunk of the paddle stroke, but it is not responsible for the forward flexion of the paddle stroke. As we come up out of the paddle stroke, each time we want to bring that trunk all the way up so that we are vertical to the water. And as we're vertical to the water, we really lengthen out that rubber band. We lengthen out the muscles of the trunk so that they're loaded and ready to explode. Um, as we kind of move through that paddle stroke and we're using the big muscles of the trunk to kind of generate the power component of of the paddle stroke, we want to move up and we want to make sure that the arm is not being the power generator, but it's transferring the power power transfer into the trunk. If you remember that shoulder position, we've got the elbow and hand at or below shoulder height that keeps the shoulder blade tight on the trunk and it allows it allows the arm to become part of the trunk rather than separate from the trunk. It keeps that shoulder in a safe position and allows us to kind of move through the motion. Again, transferring the action of the power of the stroke into the trunk and into the legs there. Um, we didn't talk a whole lot about what the bottom arm is doing, but obviously it's kind of creating some pullback as we kind of move through. And the arms are doing work, but the arms are doing work as the shoulders maintain kind of a safe position that doesn't risk that rotator cuff. So thanks for that for that demonstration, Dave. What I'd like to do, kind of in our in our next couple videos, is really kind of talk through some stretches and maybe some light exercise things that we can do. That in case we can't quite get into that good biomechanics, it'll start to give us a little bit of that flexibility to safely get there, so that paddling can continue to be not only safe but efficient and powerful.